credit. She's our neighbor from True North, the province of Alberta, Canada. Here is Bree Bam Bam Holly. And his opponent fighting out the blue corner. She's wearing the red and white trunks. She weighed in at a light but tight 117 and one quarter pounds and 30 bouts. She has 19 victories, five KOs, and she comes to us from Guadalajara de Jalisco, Mexico. Please welcome Nancy Chatita Franco. Eric Dolly with the final instruction. Okay, ladies, you already know the rules. Let me remind you to keep it clean, <coughs> protect yourself at all times, and obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both. Eight two-minute rounds. Just, just realize a weights. second straight weekend I've been ringside for a fighter from Guadalajara, Mexico. So there's the trend <laughs> right there. Now let's see if she does as well as Canelo Alvarez did last Saturday night in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Franco in the red trunks. Howling in the yellow and black, Alberta, Canada. Look for Franco, just constantly keep coming forward. Howling started boxing at the age of 21. She was uh, involved with Muay Thai. No amateur fights, no amateur boxing fights. Working behind that jab. How about that? Franco digging to the body a little bit in round number one. She's trained by her boyfriend, Declan Walsh. So Franco's a veteran in there, so she's going to uh, she's gonna keep on coming in there. Now, there's 19 losses. She's been stopped four times. And we did kind of rip off kind of a who's who that she's fought, so it's not like... The resume is not impressive of the list of her opponents. Just missed with a left downstairs. And Howling missed with a counter right up top. Ooh, left hand from Franco. That caught her. Just the experience. I mean, she's a very experienced uh, fighter, is uh, Franco. 40 professional fights. Under 30 seconds to go. Round number one, scheduled for eight. Plus whatever amateur experience she had against, you know, just six total fights for Brie Howling. And we have a lot of I was told we're going to have a lot of people watching up in the Great White North in Calgary. So this fight, this matchup, when you think about it, this potential outcome will speak more about Howling, right? Because I'm putting you in there with a 30 fight veteran. 40 fight veteran, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, pardon me, 40 fight veteran, 1992. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, it's uh, one of those litmus test kind of things. That was my lib. That was my liberal arts math for a moment. There you go. No disrespect to liberal <laughs> arts colleges. I was, I was, I was in bring it back further yeah. and take a little pot shot at that New York math. But, you know, that's, you know. <laughs> I know. Let's just get this out of the way. I mean, listen, the Rangers are up 3-0. Well, the Knicks are up 2-0. I, I, you're a Sixers guy. I'm a Knicks guy. Well, I was, I, I've gone. I haven't said a word. I was going to self-deprecate. I was going to say at least the New York the New York Knicks and New York fans, they counted the four against Sixers, and that's, that's right, it. That's, that's all. Right. That's, that's right. A, I can do my math. Thank Six God, games, 42. Thank God it wasn't a nine-game series because I don't think the Knicks fans could count the nine, uh, five, but that's beside well, the point. I'll tell you what I am counting. <laughs> How many times you won't be in action anymore this season. So <laughs> round number two. Yeah, before, we go, before we go off the rails on this yeah. one. <laughs> can you give me my moment? Yeah. <laughs> Fair and square. The, the Knicks beat them, except for game two. But uh, <laughs> Franco in the red trunks. Howling in the yellow. So an interesting opening round. Franco's going to be see, content coming forward. You see Howling now working off the jab, trying to keep Howling at bay. Franco missed with a wild left hand. Still trying to cut off the ring. Shots are coming in. Awkward. Howling, slight height advantage. See if she can use it. Uh, 
It was a right from Franco yeah. and a left. That was a good right hand, too. Caught Howling off balance a little bit. Staggered her. See, Howling, I think, can win the fight just by doing this. Yep. Pepper and outside with that left hand, doubling up on that jab, moving around well, is howling right now in round number two, under 35 seconds ago. Franco trying to switch it up a little bit. It was a good right hand from Howling. Yeah, she's, she can work behind this jab. She can make this an easier fight. Sure. Like I said Ooh, to Muhammad Ram, I said to, um, to Whitmire, easy work. He said, nothing's easy, and I agree with that. that was, but you can make it easier on yourself, I guess. When you start banking these rounds, then you force your opponent to start coming forward and maybe do something they don't, they don't necessarily want to do or can do. And that's usually when we see some of these knockouts late in fights. Two in the books. We get set for round number three. So kind of interesting weekend past coming up. You know, we saw the Haney Garcia. We saw the Garcia mess. We saw Canelo back in action. We got Loma fighting Lomachenko. We got Fury. A lot of stuff going around. In the world of boxing, I was at I was at those first two. I was at the Haiti fight. I was at the Canelo fight. Got to witness them firsthand. Yeah, they, well, and and the next week's the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Yes. So a very active boxing calendar activity. A lot of local fights, local cards as well. Yeah, we saw. Uh, I was at a big press conference today at the Wells Fargo Center to. Announced Duran Boots Hennis, who I would imagine by now is in the building because his stable mate Christian Cardo will be in action as Bree Howling uh, has a nice beginning to round three. Cardo will cap off tonight, main event against Jesus Martinez. That'll be scheduled for eight. Bantam weights. Oh, nice body shot by Howling. And then comes right back up top. Her best flurry of the night thus far in the right hand rocks back. Franco Howling digging to the body. Very judicious. How about that left? Really nice start yeah. to this round number three. Yeah, she's really going to go, it has been going to the body to start off round three. And those body shots, you start to feel them as you move into the latter portion of a fight like this. Right uppercut, just missed with the left. Really clean, effective, excellent round from Bree Howling right now. There's a nice double left. It's one of those head body shots. And you got to venture to guess, too. They start to add up. Stop Franco in her tracks a little bit. I mean, it's very, very rare, especially in the female fight game, where you will get that stoppage with some body shots. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rare, but howling right now, like boom, bam, there it was again. Yeah. Franco counters to the left. Listen, you got a 40-fight veteran in there. So, as you mentioned, you're going to have to work a little bit. But she's fighting this round, howling right now, just, just brilliantly, doing everything mm -hmm. just perfect. Really strong round. It's a very good technique for someone with such limited experience. Yes. Get set for round number four. I just had a glance, see what the Nova boys were doing for the Knicks. DiVincenzo, 35. Wow. Late in the fourth. New York down one, 199. There's your update. But, but stay here because you paid to watch this tonight. <laughs> Three in the books. I think if you're howling, that's the game plan, right? I'm going to keep 
From the outside, did you mention the distance, the outside, the jab, let her come to me. I'm gonna connect with these body shots. It's very impressive. See if she can build upon that in round number four. And I know my, uh, all, all of our fans up in Calgary tonight, they're, they're, not, they're not watching no basketball. Flames aren't in the playoffs, so Bree Howling is the only thing in town tonight. That's right, and she's fighting a very clean fight, sound fight right now. Franco trying to work the issue and get inside. CFL team's the Stampeders, right? One more time. The CFL team is the Stampeders up here. Sure, Cal Calgary Stampeders, yeah, absolutely. Right. Toronto Argonauts, right? Well, the way she's going, Bree Howling is going to be the sports franchise up there. Franco finally lands a, body shot, a yeah. left to the body. Under a minute to go in round number four. More body work from Howling. She's just making a living down, landing shots to the sides of Nancy Franco. Franco smiling. Mm -hmm. Never, ooh, under, never, right. never understood getting hit in the head and smiling. You, you know, you don't want to. Ooh, how about that combination up top by Howling? You just don't want your opponent to know that you got to him. But we know it's hey, you got me. Left from Franco. Good body work again from Bree. So four in the books inside Live Casino in Philadelphia in association with King's Promotions. Howling and Franco. So thus far, a clean sweep, in my opinion, for Howling. Much like Jen, uh, I almost called her Jennifer Hahn. It's funny, I'm, I said the right name, and uh, Henry Jones called her Jessica Hahn, her brother, or her, her sister Jennifer Hahn. Um, much like Stephanie Hahn, very systematic in yes. the way she goes about stuff as Brie Howling. Mm -hmm. Mentioned too, just six fights. But moving around well. You see the mark of a sound fighter. Anytime she's throwing those combinations, she goes right back to that jab. And this is Franco understands, hey, I'm behind on the scorecards. I'm going to keep coming forward. That's just her style. That's the nature of the beast. Obviously, she's a Mexican fighter. She's going to continuously come forward, try to press and work the issue, work the body. But I think that's tailor-made for Howling. Absolutely. I mean, Howling, she's been very adept with her jab and she's going down the body. A lot of basic stuff, but you know what? If it's working, why try to do anything else? And like I said, I, I can't believe that this young lady's had just six boxing matches. In her, it's in her. hard to believe. She looks just, she looks like a 25-fight veteran. Yeah. yeah. She, the way she sits on her, not to cut you off, the way she sits on her punches... You know, she picks and chooses her spot. She's very deliberate. Her trainer, Declan Walsh. And finally, Franco. Yeah. Well, this is what you need, right? What? Yeah, you're going to have to press this young lady, and you're going to have to force the issue a little bit if you're Franco. And Franco's going to have to land in between. Ooh, good right hand. Right to the top of the head that drove Franco back. But again, she keeps digging and driving right home to that midsection in the body. Right hand, ooh, good right hand. Sounds straight right. 
Closing in on five. Good right again over the top. Still have our co-main feature coming up. Chief Overton taking on Juan Barajas. That'll be eight rounds. See a Bantamweight title fight be taking place tomorrow night in Australia between um, Nina Hughes and Charmika Johnson. These those could be two of the girls that are that could be targeted by Bree Howling. Mm. Yeah, not to belabor the point, but that's the beauty of female boxing, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten fights, and you're fighting for a world title. Yeah. Tough to always find opponents in certain weight classes uh, back, and activity. In fact, Nina Hughes, a world champion, she's six and oh. Yeah. Same record as Brie Howling. So round six. Bree Howling, very impressive performance. Franco taking a lot of shots, still comes forward. But pretty much been tailor made for Bree Howling. 6 and 0, as Mark mentioned, two knockouts out of Alberta, Canada. And just very uh, definitive with her shots and clean rounds. Again, back to the jab. And yes. Like I said, these simple one-twos, but she, she's perfected it. You know, she steps into it. She can fight going backwards. I'd like to see, you know, down the road, she's in right hand again. She's matched up with a pressure fighter that maybe has a little pop, a little more knockouts. How many knockouts did you mention? Was Franco have four or five? I think four. Okay. Well, and who knows when they came, they could have five actually, early five in their career. Actually. And as I mentioned that, how about this? As soon as I mention it, Franco starts to touch up Howling a little bit. Howling was able to get a nice left off the ropes to stem that tide a little bit. But it's a good matchup in the right hand too. Howling connected, shot back Franco. 30 seconds to go, round six. Good right over the top from Bree. An inverted headbutt? Yes, and a right hand too, <laughs> right off that headbutt. <laughs> So a little clean up there, six. So as we take a look at what's coming up, co-main, main event, oh. Overton, Barajas, 9-0 and for a Atif. A lot of promise with that young man and, and you'll uh, see, a lot you'll, of high hopes. And you'll see a distinct... Uh, Physical advantage for a Tief Overton. Height Bar advantage, yep. Bar Bar Barajas is a little bit on the shorter end compared to Overton. And uh, Overton, I know, I've been talking to him. He's been really uh, edging to get in there and uh, wanting to put on a real strong performance tonight. Yeah, you got 6-7 against the, I believe, 5-3. I'm sorry, 5-7. You have 6-3 against 5-7. Yeah. Again, let me, <laughs> let me uh, flip that around, yeah. but still. A giant and a teeth. So Barajas is going to have to figure out a way. Let me be courageous and see if he tries to get inside. If he does, could be short work for Overton. But first things first, round seven of eight. Franco and Howling. And a nice performance by Bree Howling this evening. I have a clean sweep. Yes. You can probably make a case somewhere along the line early on for, for Franco to for a round. She said she continues to try to land some sure. winging shots in there like that. She's going to keep coming forward. Good left hand. But again, you see it, right? No panic from Howling. 
moving around, not allowing Franco. I thought Franco had to start smothering her early on in this fight. If she let Howling set the tone in the tempo with her jab and start banking rounds, now all of a sudden it forces Franco. Oh, good, good right hand, right down the middle. Forces Franco to now be a little more aggressive and take shots, and Howling, uh, she'll, she'll sit back on her punches and she'll live with that. Very textbook stuff from Bree Howling tonight. 45 seconds to go in the seventh round. Closing in through seven inside Live Casino Philadelphia. Good right hand one more time by Howling against Franco. Good body work again. Oh, right hand one more time. She, she, she does everything well in there. She, you know, she's one of those fighters right now who looks like they do nothing great but everything well. And I think that that's sometimes you want a fighter like that. Really no holes in her game uh, tonight. And if you're watching her fight for the first time, you'd be shocked at, talked about the experience. And, and that's a, we'll just, that's not a, not a detriment. She, she actually does things very good. I mean, very well, actually. You know, like I said, I, I'm amazed that she's only had six boxing matches and she, the, the, the technique that she's showing tonight. We get set for the round number eight. eight. Yep. Eighth and final round, Franco and Howling. Franco obviously going for broke at this moment. Yeah, she, she's fighting a little desperate in there as a, uh, I mean, she really wings those shots. Yes, she, she does. She throws those shots from her hip. Franco hung in there. It's a good matchup and it's a good test for Howling. Another straight right by Howling. It's like the right hand's been the theme over the last several fights. Minute to go in round number eight. Franco and Howling. Bree Howling putting a complete performance together. Nice countering by, uh, by Bree a moment ago. Good right hand. Late stages of this one. Franco trying to make one last stand here. Yeah, great performance by Howling. And as you mentioned, maybe a round for Franco. But just overall, excellent, excellent performance. The jab was there. The right hand was there. Out of harm's way. Final 10. Nice body work both ends as we close this thing. And as always, Mark will have the post-fight interview. And this one will go to the scorecards. We believe Howling with the clean sweep may be around for Franco, but good sportsmanship, good fight.
So good fight between Howling and Franco. Make it official in a moment. Good matchmaking too. Howling got tested in this one, but very uh, businesslike, methodical. Did a really nice job. Walks away with the win. We'll make it official though in a moment. 